All right, what's up everybody? This is the explanation for problem F from Code Forces around 726. Um, this is problem F, which is the last problem of the contest. Um, I'm all, I will once again assume that you've read the problem. So if you haven't yet, then just, I'll, I'll put the link in the description and then you can look at it. So pretty much what we have is, um, we have this graph, right? I'll just draw an arbitrary graph like this. It doesn't really matter what it looks like. So if it's something like this, 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 you know, it can look something like that. Okay. And in any one move, we want to, um, we can increase any two adjacent nodes by the same value. So for example, we can pick an edge Let's say, for example, we pick this edge, and then we increase the values written on these nodes by x. And x is obviously the same value, and x is any integer value. Okay? So that's kind of the first like thing you have to realize about this problem, is that you're just kind of like doing moves on this graph, and all you have to do is to determine whether it's possible or not. So the best way to approach problems like these, in which you're checking whether a graph like follow a certain condition is to first make observations as to what the operation does. So if we notice the operation, it always affects um, like two nodes connected by an edge. So let's just assume like first the graph is a tree because that's just a little bit easier to think about a lot of times. Like if you turn a graph prop, if you can like take a graph problem, turn it into a tree, and then first solve the tree version, that might give you a little bit more insight. So for example, let's say our graph looks something like this instead. Um, yeah. Okay. So the same move we can apply on like any two adjacent nodes. What you realize in this case is that because a tree is a bipartite graph, if we were to color these nodes like black and then the rest of the nodes are white, like it's a, it's a valid like bipartite coloring of this graph, then any move that we do will increase one black node by X and the one white node by X when these two nodes are adjacent. So this is like an interesting reduction that we might be able to use in the future, which we will be using. So that's like the first observation we can make. So let's go into another observation we can make. This time, let's just think about any two nodes that are, or any three nodes that look like this. So for example, if this was node A, this was node B, and this is node C, and we have edges coming like this, or hmm, I guess what's a better way to visualize this? Okay, so we have A, B, C, and we have like another edge over here, D. So what if we wanted to affect two um, nodes that are not next to each other. So for example, what if we wanted to like change the values of C and B without changing the values of A or D? So one way you can do that is we, for example, if we increase both C and A by X, then C and A will be affected. But then the next move we can make is we could increase A and B by negative X. And what, will this, and what this will do is this will essentially cancel out these operations on this A node. So this is the same as if we didn't do any operation on A at all. So doing these two moves basically turns C and B as X and negative X, right? And so this tells us that um, basically if C and B are one apart, then we can like increase and decrease them by the same amount, like freely between each other. As in like we can take one unit from C and move it to B or take one unit from B and move it to C because we're adding X units to C and subtracting X units from B. Okay, so now let's take it a little bit further and let's think about what if we wanted to affect C and D? Well, then in that case, we could do one more operation where we increase B and D by X. And then this negative X and X on node B now cancel out. And so now you start to realize something we can actually use this path of odd length to create this um, increment of C and D on both of these, by X on both of these nodes. 
we can also achieve the same move if we were to just take an edge and draw if we were to have an edge between C and D and we just did this move on this edge in from the beginning. So um, one important thing to realize is that if our graph is bipartite, then we can make some like observations. So for example, if I, I'll just draw a bipartite graph over here. So something like this. Yeah, let's, let's assume our graph looks like this for now. Then we can color these nodes as black. This is white, white, this is black. And this node over here is white. So if we were to, so if we wanted to change um, two nodes of the same color, what this means is that we can take any value x, and if we were to add it onto a white node, then we have to subtract it from any other white node. And the same applies if this is a black node, so it's just the same color. So if we want to change two nodes of the same color in a bipartite coloring, then um, we have to do operations like this, where we increase some node by x and we decrease some node but also by x. And if we wanted to change two nodes of different colors, then what we do is, in this case, if they're different, let's say this is a white node and this is a black node, then if we were to increase the white node by x, then we also have to increase the black node by x. So this is an interesting property. And so we can make an observation that this is the only thing that we need to um, check if the graph is bipartite. So what I mean by this is the following. If the graph is bipartite, and if the, um, because our goal is to make like all these values match your target value, right? So at the very beginning, we can think of it like this. It's easier to think of a problem as instead of reaching some target value, what if a target value for all of these nodes was just zero? So what I mean by that is um, if we have like, for example, if a certain node, this was like the initial value, and this was a target value. If our initial value was like three and our target value was negative one, this is the same thing as saying that our initial value is four and our target value is zero. And we can say something similar. So for example, if our initial value was like five and our target value was 12, this is the same as saying our initial value is negative seven and our target value is zero. So before we do any of this, we can actually subtract our target value from our initial value to solve a problem, assuming that the target value for all nodes is equal to zero. And this just makes things a little bit easier to think about. So this is the first thing that we want to do before, like, well, okay. You can do this first and then find a bipartite, whether the graph is bipartite or not, and then like split it into two different cases. We've already covered a little bit on what the case is if the graph is bipartite. So if a graph is bipartite, then what this means is that, um, we can do this. All we need to do is if we were to get the sum of all of these initial values from a black node and the sum of all initial values from a white nodes. So um, this is just like initial values. And this is after we like subtracted the target values from all of them. So if we call this B and we call this W, if the graph is bipartite, all we have to do is to check whether b is equal to w. If it is, then it's possible. And I'll explain why. So, as we explained earlier, we can change um, these like black and white values to whatever we want. So, for example, if like we wanted to like change the values between like two different adjacent nodes, it doesn't really matter what they are. But what matters is that if um, we had a white and a black node like this, we have to increase the white node by the same value as we increase this black node. So our goal, keep in mind that our goal is to make all of these nodes zero. So we want to make B equal to zero as well as W equal to zero. 
So we have like a certain value like b. Let's say our certain value for b was, for example, like the sum of all the values are negative 2 at the moment, right? And then the sum of all the white values was equal to like 3. And we want to make both of these equal to 0. Well, the thing is, is that the only way we can make the sum of all black and sum of all white is equal to 0 is if we increase all of these by x. And as you can see, because we're always increasing by the same value, we can never make both of these equal to 0 unless if this condition holds. So that's like, so that's um, one observation that you have to make, is that the sum of black has to equal the sum of white if the graph is bipartite. And the reason why this is the only condition you have to check is because of the, con of the um, observation earlier where we noticed if we were to change two nodes of the same color, we could just go x and negative x. This operation means that the sum over all black nodes never changes. And this also means that we can change that so long as the total sum is equal to zero, we always have some way to interchange these values to where we can make all the positive values and all negative values cancel out each other and all of them become zero. So yeah, this is um, like the first case where the graph is bipartite. So now let's consider a case where the graph is not bipartite. So what does that imply specifically? So if a Okay, if a graph is not bipartite, then for, it has an odd cycle. So let's assume our odd cycle looks something like this. So let's just first do some operations to see what happens. We can increase both of these nodes by x, and then over here, what if we were to say increase them, well, like subtract x from them, so this becomes negative x and negative x, and this cancels out. And so what we've essentially done is we've made a move to two adjacent nodes to where we add x on one and subtract x from the other. So this is um, slightly different now because now it doesn't really matter how we color the nodes. It's always possible to um, make a move x, to like make two adjacent nodes either increase both by x or make one increase by x while the other decreases by x. And we can also notice that because the graph is connected, what we can do is even if we're like on some part of a graph where like it seems bipartite at first, so for example, if our graph looks something like this, if it eventually leads to an even to an odd cycle, let's say for example we wanted to like increase this by x. This is subtract plus minus, and like for example, we want to like subtract this by x. Normally we did like minus plus minus plus. It looks bipartite at first, but because there's an odd cycle that exists, we can always go to this odd cycle, go around it once, and just come back to where, to whichever node we would need to subtract from. And that would like allow us to do this, to where we can increase x while decrease x from like any two nodes, as well as increasing both of them by two nodes. So what does this imply? So now we don't really care about black nodes and white nodes, we only care about like the sum over all nodes. So let's do this. Let's define the sum of all initial values as s. So I'll write this as a not bipartite case. And so we let the sum over all nodes be equal to s. What this means is that um, we need to make sure that we, could, we, have, we always have some way to make s equal to 0. And the only way to do, to do that is this. Obviously, we can either do an operation of increasing one node by x and then decreasing one node by x. So, I mean, to make that a little more clear, it's like x and then negative x. The total contribution this move has to the sum is always equal to zero because x plus minus x is equal to zero. So this means that we can always rearrange the values within nodes, but we can never change the total sum using this operation. However, we can change the total sum using an operation where we increase two nodes by the same value of x. Because this, and whatever this move does, it has a contribution of 2x, 2s. And keep in mind, x can be negative as well. So if we want to make s equal to 0, and we can only do like moves like this, because keep in mind, this move will never affect s, then this means that we can make s equal to 0 
if and only if s is even. So if s is even, then the answer is yes. And the reason why is because we can just like take, we can just set x to be equal to s over 2. Make this move on any like two nodes, and then the sum of, and then s will just become 0. And then we can just use these set of moves to make all the nodes actually equal to 0. So yeah, um, this is basically the entire problem. We've covered both like the bipartite and the non-bipartite cases, as well as like the conditions that are needed to determine whether it's possible or not. So yeah, um, the code is pretty simple for this. All you do is just figure out whether the graph is bipartite or not. If it is, then you do the first logic that I mentioned, comparing the sum of a black with the sum of the white nodes. And if the graph is not bipartite, then you do this logic over here, where you find the sum over all nodes and then check to see if it's even or not. Or like if the absolute value is even or not. So yeah, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. Um, other than that, I hope you found something interesting in this video. Bye.